Greetings, everybody. It's Wednesday, July the 13th, and as promised today, I'm going to try to get through as many of these emails as I can. I got a little list here. Um, I probably won't be able to get through all of them, but I will get through as many as I can, so bear with me. All right. Number one subject is Elnin slash Nibiru. Big surprise there, right? Um, the number one question I'm getting on this is, are they the same thing? And of that, I am still uncertain. There is evidence that supports it, and then there is evidence that does not support it. So, um, Some evidence that does support it is that we've had much more meteors and asteroid close flybys lately. And this would seem to hint more toward Nibiru, as Nibiru is said to be a binary star and has planets that orbit it. So in that sense, it would make sense that instead of just one comet coming through the solar system and knocking celestial bodies around, you have a uh, dwarf star and surrounding planets. So that would lead more toward Nibiru. And another question about Nibiru I'm getting is, do I think that it's a starship? And the answer to that is yes. I think all planets are starships. A lot of people, you know, are having a hard time comprehending that, but that's what I believe. We're on a starship right now, going through space. And really, when you think about it, is it that far-fetched? I don't think so. Um, another thing about Elnin and Nibiru is, is it going to impact? Now, of this, I'm uncertain as well. One thing is for sure that it's gaining speed at a very substantial rate as it approaches the sun. And as it goes around the back of the sun, it's going to come out at a very high speed. Granted, it won't be as high a speed as it when it goes around the sun, but still, it's going to be very substantial. And if we are able to observe it in the sky, it won't be but for maybe a month, maybe two, perhaps three at the most. And a lot of things that people aren't taking into account, um, given the recent trajectory of Comet Elnin, is that the trajectory can be altered by many different things. If it impacts a celestial body, if, you know... There's a large solar flare as it goes around. This can change the trajectory of it. So it's a close approach now. And given, you know, all these different factors that can alter its trajectory, you know, there is a chance it may impact or it may even be pushed further away. So, you know, it's too early to tell on that. Um, I will leave a link in my video description. It has quite a bit of information about Nibiru. And... Um, Again, if, if it doesn't resonate with you, then discard it, you know. just If you think it's bunk, then forget about it, you know. It's not part of your reality, so forget about it. But the information was there, and I'll have it linked in my video description. Okay, moving on. Pole shift is uh, another hot subject going on. Do I think we are in the midst of a pole shift? Absolutely. I think it's pretty hard to dismiss it, given all the climate change and... Uh, you know, they've even said on MSM that Magnetic North is moving. They've been awful quiet about it since the slight, uh, slight report they had on, I believe it was uh, NBC News, a couple months back. But you know, there's there's record cold and excuse me, record cold in South America right now. The Northern Hemisphere is getting record heat in many areas. We have sinkholes opening. We have earthquakes. We have volcanoes. And that's another thing that relates to Nibiru, the question was, do I think it's related to all these planetary changes? And the answer to that is yes, absolutely. If it's Comet Elnin or if it's Nibiru, I think it's related. And you know, throughout mankind, comets have played a pretty big influence on this planet. You know, there's lots of theories that state when the comet passes, the world will be changed forever. The continents will be rearranged completely. And, you know, with each earthquake, it seems to further that theory. So, is there a pole shift going on? Yes. Another question about pole shift is, where will the Earth's new equator be? And to that, I have no answer. You know, it's still too early to tell. I mean, 
there's no telling what's going to happen in the next six months when this thing flies by. As I said, it could impact. It, I mean, one thing is for sure, when it does go by, it's going to pull our southern pole. And it's going to pole shift, as many people have said. And it's going to be very dramatic and very quick, which will no doubt cause catastrophic changes on the Earth. Okay, moving on. Uh, the Federal Reserve. Um, I'm getting many questions about the Federal Reserve and their credibility. To me, their credibility is absolutely zero. They're a bunch of liars, thieves, and cons. Enslaving people with their little paper money. It's, uh, it's garbage, you know. Obama claims now that if there is not a solution to our budget by the 3rd, then Social Security checks are not guaranteed. And sadly, I fear that's what it's going to take for most of the sheeple Americans to wake up, you know. Earthquakes won't do it. Uh, solar flares won't do it. Floods won't do it. But you take away their social, uh, social excuse me, social security check and their money, and they're going to be right on that. Guarantee that they'll be they'll be rioting over that. You know, it's a sad state of affairs that you know greed has become that bad. But you know, sadly, I think that's what it's going to take to wake people up. And uh, also on the Federal Reserve is, uh, do I think there are secret reserve installations where they print money? And absolutely I do, absolutely. I think there was a video that just came out a day or two ago that was talking about that. It's, uh, you know, to me, money and time go hand in hand as tools of control. And that's what they are. You have time which you are bound by, and you have money, which you are bound by. You must learn to let go of both if you hope to ascend. Which leads me to my next subject, which is ascension. Um, questions regarding, you know, what can we do to prepare for ascension? What can we do to make sure that we do ascend if that's what we want? And here's all I can tell you about this. I'll only give you my own philosophy. In my studies, when you are ready for ascension, it means you are ready to leave everything behind all the experiences you had over many incarnations in this world you're ready to leave behind your family your your memories your material possessions everything is going to be left behind when you are ready to ascend and so you know it's not really such a simple thing and you have of course you have to be at peace you have to be of the higher vibration so, you know, the lower vibrations such as fear, hate, anger, greed, those things are going to hinder you from ascension. But the best thing I can tell everybody is to see with your heart, not so much your eyes. You know, if it feels good in here, if it feels right, then go with it. If not, then discard it. Um, next subject, history. Uh, the history of this world. People want to know my opinions on it. I will tell you this. I believe that most history is fake and it's been altered to cull the masses and to keep them in control. You know, what is history? You look at the word, what does it say? It says his story. Not your story, his story. And as I've said before, I believe time is malleable and warpable and it's fake. It's just a concept used to control. And much like money, the concept is running its course. It's proving to be less and less effective in these times. Okay, uh, I'm short on time here. I want to go on. I'd like to go in more depth about all this. I hope to in a future video, but today I just want to get through the bulk of this. I'm overwhelmed with questions. So everybody, please be patient and have temperance. I will get to you all. Just bear with me. Uh, next subject is CERN. The LHC, Large Hadron Collider, do they, uh, one question is, do I believe that it's a time machine? And to answer that question, I believe yes. Not so much in the sense that people use it to traverse time, but that it's being used to alter time and mess with time. And if you notice, do some research into it. You don't hear about it much in MSM or anywhere else, but there is another LHC that's being constructed. And this one is larger than the current one. 
I believe it's slated to be completed in 2018. So whatever they're up to, they're ambitious about it and they're continuing, you know, their experiments in building another LHC. Um, next subject is double agents. And uh, do I believe there are double agents working within the government, within uh, the shadow government, slash the Illuminati or whatever, and working for, you know, the light as well? And the answer to that is yes, absolutely. I believe there's double agents. I believe there's uh, many of them. And they all have an agenda that is either their own or working for one of the sides. One of the polarities. And I'll give you a perfect example, excuse me, I'll give you a perfect example of one, Jesse Ventura. He came out with his conspiracy theory show and, you know, a lot of people watched that and, you know, began to question and open their eyes. But then at the same time, you'll notice when he is on uh, wrestling events for WWE and Vince McMahon, he wears coats with Illuminati symbolism and the Rothschild crest all over it. So what does that tell you? I have no doubt Jesse Ventura is a double agent. His agenda, who he's working for, I don't know. But I can tell you he's a double agent. And uh, Alex Jones, you know, I've yet to label him a double agent, but I am very suspicious of him. You know, it's you just you look at his radio show. Look at the screen behind him. What do you see? You see the machine. You see the circle in the cube. It's, he's telling you one thing, but the symbolism, excuse me, the symbolism is telling you something totally different. Um... Okay, moving on. I had some questions about uh, reports that police departments are acquiring tanks. Now, I have had a couple of confirmations from contacts that their local police departments have indeed acquired tanks. And I believe this relates to all the military movement that's been going on recently in, this, in the United States and around the border. Now... It shouldn't take you long to figure out why the police are getting tanks. It's obviously in case of a SHTF scenario. And, you know, why else would they be acquiring tanks unless they were preparing for something huge? So, again, I can confirm that there have been contacts of mine that they have confirmed that police departments are acquiring tanks. Um, moving on, Arizona. The recent dust storm. Do I believe that the lights in the sky were extraterrestrial or were they covert military vehicles? And the answer to this is I believe these are extraterrestrials, not military. They may be working with the military, but I don't believe their origin is military. And if you'll do some research, you'll notice that in Arizona, the firefighters have special training. It's different than training in most other states. And it's not due directly to the heat. Research it, everybody. You'll see what I'm talking about. And you may be surprised at what you find. Okay, uh, next subject. This will probably be the last one for today. I'm short on time, forgive me. Uh, the new zodiac and the sign of Phaicus. Do I believe that this is a credible sign? Now, the zodiac has remained unchanged for millennia. And... Now, this is just my own opinion. It seems to me that if there ever were a time to implement a new zodiac sign, now would be the time. All this talk of the new age and of humanity ready to enter the community Galactica. And if you'll notice, the sign of Iacus itself is the man and the serpent. And, you know, it's it reminds me of the caduceus wand. You know, a symbol can speak a million words. And if you look at the caduceus, what does it tell you? The serpent's vortex upward to the winged planet, which I believe represents man's journey, riding the serpent, which is the pencil, writing, knowledge, language, up until the point where he has learned all he can and he's ready to ascend, hence the winged planet. So, to me, this new zodiac sign, you know, it, it doesn't directly resonate with me, but when I think of it logically, it would it would seem, you know, fathomable that it's it's true. Of course it's not it, many are not accepting it and probably will not accept it, but it has also been mentioned in channelings from the esoteric community and etc. 
So, I mean, it's to change the, to add a sign to the Zodiac, you know, I mean, you have to ask yourself, who is in charge of the Zodiac? Think about that. Who, who, who can implement a new sign into the Zodiac? And you can, like I said, you can do your own research into Ophiuchus. I believe there's a band called Ophiuchus as well. You may want to check out some of their songs and lyrics. You might find that interesting as well. Um, so anyway, that's that's about all the time I have for today, everybody. I apologize. I wanted to get through a lot more. I hope to get through more, uh, some more answers tomorrow. Again, I ask for your patience and your temperance with me. I have uh, a lot on my plate recently, you know, most of you know all my struggles with money and etc. It's really not a struggle though. It's uh, I told my mother and father straight up, you know, if you want to throw me out of here, then please do it. I will survive. I'm a survivalist. You know, I, I can survive out there. I have no doubts about it. But, you know, it's the whole family deal, so I don't think they're going to do it. And they try to, you know, there's always that feeling of guiltiness, you know, what can I do to contribute? I feel I do enough to contribute here. Granted, I'm not working, but I do what I can, and my mother and father lo know I love them deeply, and I would do anything for them. So uh, that's it for today, everyone. I hope I've given you some insight. Again, you know, if it doesn't resonate with you, then I say dismiss it immediately. So I love you all, and be well.